Adam Nip joined by Woodstock Mayor Pat Sebesky for an edition of Web Chat with the Mayor. It's uh, one of those weeks or one of those months where there's uh, two council meetings, both county and city, on the same week. So uh, two Web Chats in one week and a pretty big meeting at City Hall this week, Pat, with the capital budget set to come forward for finalization. Yes, uh, last meeting we uh, presented it uh, at council. There's been a meeting, subsequent uh, public meeting last week where council reviewed it line by line, page by page. And so there's a few amendments coming forward at council. Uh, the capital budget is setting out the plan for the long-term spending over the next four or five years. Uh, one of the key things that was reported was the road budget. We spend about three and a half million dollars on roads each year, and there was a consultant study suggesting that we should be probably spending six to seven million dollars on roads to keep the infrastructure up. So while the roads in Woodstock are good compared to other municipalities, it's kind of a little, a little red flag warning to council saying, unless you pick up the spending dollars in that area. Uh, some council 20, 25 years from now will be dealing with a major problem. So th that came up in the budget. You're expecting as well uh, the art gallery and, and whether or not to renovate and at what level to renovate it will be uh, probably a hot topic. I expect it to be. It's certainly it's uh, always been a discussion. Yeah. Uh, there's two options available in the book. It talks about a $600,000 option, but when Sheila Perry came before council uh, at the public meeting, she indicated that there's really no need to put the special that, uh, HVAC system up to the third level. And so therefore she's recommending option B, which is a project that's in that $350,000 to $400,000 range. The significant part of the presentation is that she's new in town, but she's saying that if that's to be accomplished, then basically She's going to raise half the money through fundraising and other types of provincial funding and everything else. So this is a lady that's come to town with lots of ideas, but apparently is, you know, prepared to put her reputation on the line saying, I think this is important, but I'm also prepared to go out and demonstrate that I can also raise funds for the gallery. So we'll see how council deals with that. All right, should be interesting indeed. Uh, in other downtown news, uh, community improvement project, we've got another one coming forward that's uh, downtown incentives for building owners who uh, spruce things up a bit. Yes, this is a 405 Dundas Street with the uh, YFC. This is the uh, uh, Youth Unlimited. And they have the bike shop. They have the bike shop. The bike. And, and when we announced the community improvement uh, plan, they took a look at it. They were interested. They always wanted to do the renovations there. They were just waiting for some assistance. And so this program, uh, they'll be receiving... Uh, I believe grants of around 27000 to do the facade and to work on three apartments uh, inside the building. Uh, there's a loan portion of some fifty-eight, fifty-five thousand, or something like that, no interest loan. In addition to that, the county's given them some money through their um, affordable housing program. So anyways, this all works within the, uh, the project. So this will be, of course, the third program that we've done under the Community Improvement Plan. I like this one because it's uh, focused on a small business, putting a residential upstairs, improving the facade. Uh, so these are the types of projects that are important. But we've also done uh, uh, 18 Van Sitter and uh, 384 Dundas Street. So it's a way of helping to leverage uh, private investment in the downtown. Yeah, it's good to hear it's picking up some momentum. And one other thing to touch on is uh, the city is going to be servicing some industrial land. And this is for a company that's already announced that they're coming here. Yeah, Mitsui, their uh, subsidiary, uh, Mit Steel, uh, purchased eight acres of land uh, on Parkinson Road, five acres with a three-acre option. And they're, they're going to be building a 70,000-square-foot facility out there to make a niche steel product. I'm not sure who they're selling it to. But they'll be hiring, we estimate, between 30, 35 people. Of course, when they bought the land, the land is to be serviced. Uh, we haven't got the water sewer there yet. So... Um, uh, on the council budget is a budget for $120,000 to have Sierra Construction put the water and sewer in because that's part of the deal when we sold them the land. Well, you better get that done then. We have, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're building the project, so we better hope that by the time they're ready to cut the ribbon, the, uh, their taps work and the toilets flush. So No, for sure. That is very important. Uh, that about wraps it up. There's uh, lots of other stuff coming up at both city and county council this week. And uh, once again, we thank you for your time, Pat. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too.